What's going on, everybody? It's your boy JT, and welcome back to another episode of South Stand Stories. And the South Stand Stories, where we have fixed the microphone problems, and hopefully, there won't be any more audio distortion like there has been for the past month and a bit where I have had some teething issues and mostly just fraudulence on my end. But I tell you, nothing I have done, no fraudulence conceived, produced, believed by myself could ever, ever be as fraudulent as what we've seen from Leeds United over the past couple of weeks. It has been abhorrent, awful. Eye gouging to its very core. I mean, after that forest result, all of us started to believe. We started to think that we could be safe. That a couple more wins would secure us our Premier League position. And then we go three games without a win. Three games without a point. Three games in which we scored three goals, but conceded 13. How? How do you concede 13 goals in three games? How do you concede 11 goals in two games? And we played Fulham last week. Well, I say last week. Today is currently Tuesday, the day in which we are playing Leicester, which we're here to talk about, which, uh, according to my calculations, is... Three days after that disgraceful performance against Fulham. But, you know, we don't need to talk about that again. We've probably spoken about that to death, not just me. Probably everyone has spoken about that to death. Any Leeds creator, any Leeds fan you've spoken to, heck, any football fan with a pair of eyes that could see what's going on down there has probably spoken about that game to death, really. I mean, it was just, you know, it was a game which... You hoped there would be a response. You know, they you hoped that there would be some sort of reaction by the players after what they had put us through the past couple of games. But no, there wasn't. Again, you saw people shirking responsibility, people looking like they didn't even want to really be there, people looking like they didn't really give two shits what happened to us. You know, that's as simple as I can put it. Um and will anything change? Will anything change? Uh, a lot of us are hoping, a lot of us are praying that things are going to change against Leicester. The likelihood of that, 50-50, to be honest, flip of a coin. Because by all accounts, this is, we've said it a lot, but this by far is the biggest game of the season. By a country mile, Leicester, one point behind us. Out of the relegation zone. Now, potentially, could dump us back into it. With five games to go after that. <laughs> we're in a worse position than we were last year. Points wise. <sighs> but if it goes right. If it goes right. Well, who knows. Then we're only three points off the points tally that we accrued last season. And let's not forget. Around this time of the season, last season, we also went through a patch of games where we lost three in a row. We also went through a patch of games where it looked like we were destined to go down. And then we pulled it out of the fire right at the end. Big personalities, big characters pulled it out of the fire. Joe Gelhard, in the last minute of the game, flicking the ball over the defender's leg, I believe it was Cucurella, dinking it in. Strike back post. Rafinha. Harrison pulling it through at the last second. We can still do it. By all means, it is not out of the realms of possibility that Leeds stay up. I know everyone's dumping it around. Everyone's saying we're relegated and everyone's harking back to the Bielsa days and all of this stuff. And, and it's a really, really toxic place to be right now as a Leeds fan. And way more toxic than it was last year. And those are not good signs. People running around screaming, sack the board, this, sack the board, that. This guy's useless. This guy's... It's not helping anybody. I'm going to be real with you. It's not helping anybody. It's not helping the team. It's not helping us. It's not helping the fans have any sort of unity. In order to succeed, you have to have unity from the board, from the fans, from the players. Every single person invested in Leeds United has to be pulling in the right direction. And right now, we're not. 
and we're not, there is a huge, 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 huge breakdown in communications between the board and the players, between the players and the fans. And that's what's causing what you're seeing on the pitch. Most importantly, it's the players. They deserve first responsibility, you know, if things go wrong. And the manager is second and the owner's third. Those are the those are the, the chain of commands, you know. The owners are powerless to coach the players that they have at their disposal. And the manager is powerless to implement the tactics that he is giving to his players. So his players have to be doing the job. His players have to be the ones that are pulling us out of this. And right now, they're not. Right now, they deserve as much criticism as anyone. And people saying sack the board this, sack the board that are only deflecting away from the true issue, which is those players not showing fight, not showing heart, not showing desire, not showing anything right now. Not showing anything. But like I said... The season is not over. Tomorrow, big game. If we win, if we win, all of a sudden things are looking positive. All of a sudden, maybe we start to think, maybe we could string a couple of results together. And then the next game after that is Manchester City. So, the chances of us getting anything out of that City game are very low. So, if we lose this game, well, then we really are in a perilous position going into the last four games of the season, requiring really four wins to secure survival, which is not the place that you want to be. So hopefully that is all hypothetical and hopefully Leeds get a win against Leicester tomorrow. Hopefully we can only pray, we can only hope that we can get a win tomorrow. And I'm starting to get nervous, I am, but I don't want to protrude nervous energy onto you guys. I don't want to give you guys the wrong impression. I don't want to give you guys fear. I want to give you guys confidence. And to give you that confidence, we're going to be saying right now, as things stand, the only players ruled out for Leeds are Tyler Adams and Stuart Dallas. Now, to give you slightly less confidence, it is apparently rumoured. Now, these are all rumours. You know, as Conor McGregor said, it's all rumours. But rumours nonetheless that Voba potentially might not be fit or Cooper might not be fit. I'm just reading into what Javi Grazia said in his press conference and the way he said it. Didn't fill people with a lot of confidence, me included, my father included. Didn't fill us with a lot of confidence. The way he spoke, the manner in which he spoke, and the fact that he said that he's basically going to have to see with a few of these players. And it kind of came after they were talking about Cooper and Voba. So, hopefully... Hopefully not the case. Hopefully those two can play because I thought they actually defended the right and Melier kind of threw him under the bus. Now, when it comes to Leicester, on the other hand, Harvey Barnes, James Madison and Jamie Vardy, who all missed their last game, are apparently ready to play this game. Ready to play this game. Harvey Barnes coming off a thigh injury, James Madison coming off an illness and Jamie Vardy coming off an ankle injury. Apparently are all fit to play, which, again, is not good reading if you're a Leeds fan. Um, it really isn't, especially with the way our defence has been. Jamie Vardy is not the player that you want coming up against it. He really, really isn't with his pace in behind on the counter-attack. Leeds have shown frailties in defending from the counter-attack, which is why, actually, I think it's very important that we start both Cooper and Cock together. I do, I do. Depending on, on what happens with Firpo or Voba, if he goes with Firpo then probably Cock and Voba and pray that things go well, or you start a back three. Either way, Voba's got to be involved. Cock's got to be involved. And then we pray. And then we pray, boys. Speaking of praying, I pray we can get a goal. I pray Bamford can get a goal. And I would actually start Bamford, to be fair, because I know I've been back in Rodrigo a lot. He didn't do all that much for me in the last game against Fulham. He really didn't. I don't think he's the same player that he was before he got injured, whether that's because he's not 100% fit yet. Maybe that's because the broken leg has really taken something out of him, but he's still not the same player that he was. He really isn't. Um, and I would give Rutter a go, but he doesn't want to risk Rutter. And Rutter being thrown into a game like this is a massive, massive risk. So I think he will start with Patrick Bamford. And Patrick Bamford actually did looked like he had a little bit of quality to him when he came on against Fulham. I know he got the goal, 
and he also looked like you know he was actually adding a little bit of pace up front a little bit of pressing a bit of energy so i would go with patrick bamford and again we pray, we pray that it can work things out we pray to the lord god and hope that something happens something good happens um do i believe do i believe yeah i have to believe i have to believe this is leeds you know we've been in these kind of situations before hopefully we can take and learn from the experiences of last year and pull ourselves out of the mire that we are stuck in before it gets too deep before we get stuck too deep in that relegation battle hopefully we can pull ourselves out with a big big result tomorrow or today actually um and i think we might just nick it to let me know what you guys think anyway down in the comment section down below what would you change from last game what do you think the problem that we are stuck in is and what are your scores on the doors let me know down in the comment section down below with now guys i will see you a little bit soon out of my brothers and my sisters